Hi, I'm Coach Lucas, and we're going to look at the swing to handstand today. In the swing to handstand video, we're going to look at four parts. The first two parts are the forward swing and backward swing. These make up the core part of the swing to handstand. The third and fourth part are a little bit more complex and it, we advance to this as we get more improved in our swing. That's the bail from handstand and also the rise to handstand. Let's take a look. You may have noticed that there's blocks beneath us. This is actually for safety reasons. It's important that when the gymnast is learning to swing or learning to swing the handstand, that the distance between the parallel bars and the floor does not exceed armpit height. So the gymnast can stick his arms out and there's still clearance beneath the bars. This is because if the gymnast buckles or their arms bend and fall through the bars, they don't hurt their sternum by getting caught on the parallel bars. This can lead to torn rotator cuffs. So the first two parts that we're gonna look at today are the swing forwards and the swing backwards. With the gymnast, he's gonna jump up to front support, eyes pick something in front of him and they're gonna constantly stay forwards. From here, the hips are slightly open and we're swinging only through the shoulders. That slight arch in the hips prevents the gymnast from swinging through their hips, which is one of the common errors we're going to look at later. Perfect. Please note, when the gymnast is swinging forwards in the cross support position, the hips are leading the way. On the opposite side of this, when the gymnast is swinging backwards in the support position, the heels are leading the way. This is the best for building power in the later swing to handstand. Once the gymnast has done hundreds of these cross support swings and they're showing strong shapes and strong confidence in the position, we're then going to add resistance through bungee cords on either side of the gymnast, roughly at their shin and the back of their calves. This will allow for a faster action and reaction time to build further strength in the shoulders, which is what we need to swing to handstand. Let's take a look as the gymnast does this. Note the struggle that the gymnast has to keep the hips open. This really, really makes it hard and good for bigger and better swings. So we've looked at the first part and the second part, which is swinging forwards and backwards in the cross support position. Now we're going to move into the third and fourth part, which is the entry to handstand and the descent from handstand. For this drill, the gymnast is going to kick up to handstand. And every swing to handstand always starts with the head coming up, so we're looking forwards. Hips are gonna drop down. If you notice, the hips led the way just as they did in our forward swing. However, in our reverse swing, where our heels lead the way, they're only gonna lead the way until approximately horizontal. At this point, the head's gonna come back in, and the body's gonna change to that hollow shape, allowing the gymnast to press up. So from here, the gymnast is gonna hollow, head comes back in, and press back up to that nice shape. We're gonna try this two more times. Once the gymnast has done this lots of times, they're then going to do it unassisted. The gymnast is going to kick up to handstand and what we're looking for is the head to come forwards to initiate that downswing and the hips lead the way. Making sure they hit that cheese mat tight and feet together. Good, we'll try this one more time. Again, nope. Nice handstand, head comes forwards. Perfect. Please note, when the gymnast's head first comes out, you can start to see the descent but the shoulders always remain over top of the hands as best as possible. This prevents the plunging action, which will actually counteract the swing down and slow down the swing in front. Now we're gonna look at the strength that we need to develop in order to swing to handstand. You may remember back to our press to handstand video on our Inspire Skills channel, where in order to stack, it has to go shoulders, bum, heels. Ideally, in the swing to handstand, we are looking for that hollow body shape where hips and heels meet handstand at the same time. However, in order to develop this on the parallel bars where the gymnast can do it unassisted, we're going to have parallettes and the gymnast is going to jump from a legs together position through a pike where it goes shoulders, bum, heels. Let's take a look. Awesome. Now we're moving up to the parallel bars. As noted before, safety is always a big concern. So to do this, we have our boxes below. So if the gymnast does not make it to handstand, he can jump down safely between the bars. And we have the mats on the front of the P-bars. So if he gets to handstand and falls over, which is our goal, he can land safely on his back. 
We're gonna do the exact same drill that we just did on the floor. The gymnast is gonna grab near the end of the parallel bars. He's gonna jump to handstand, shoulders, hips, heels. Let's take a look. Perfect. Now that we're comfortable going to handstand unassisted and we've got the core basics down for the swing below the bars, we're gonna combine the two steps together. The gymnast is gonna do three open hip eyes forward swings. And on the third one, as the coach, we're gonna stop just above horizontal where the transition takes place to that planche position, just like we did on the cheese mat. Let's take a look. So one, two, and on the third one, his heels come up, transitions to hollow, up to handstand, and falls off. Perfect. Going up to handstand is always more important to coming down at the beginning. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but as a coach, I'm gonna help a little bit less, and we're gonna see that transition of the heels to hollow a little bit more naturally and done by the gymnast. One, two, and his heels come up and transitions to that hollow and a nice fall. Once the gymnast has reached this point, as a coach, I can start to step away and the gymnast can try a little bit more and more by themselves. Let's take a look at what happens if the gymnast doesn't make it over the handstand. All right, now the gymnast is gonna do it unassisted and we're gonna take a look at what it looks like when the gymnast does not make it over the handstand. One, two, three. A nice safe landing and the gymnast can keep his hands on the parallel bars and land on the box without hurting himself. Please note that as the gymnast develops more comfort in this progression, you'll start to see the open hip position where the heels are leading the way on the way to handstand, switching to the hollow a lot more fluently and naturally. This is when as a coach, we can start to say the gymnast has developed that skill in the swing to handstand position and they're ready to start looking at the descent. All right, time for the descent. Once the gymnast can swing over horizontal with hips open, oftentimes you see the gymnast start to feel a little bit of an arm buckle and this is where we sacrifice form. To prevent this, we are gonna work at 45 degree swings with a momentary pause from the coach to allow them to develop the swing and comfort as well as holding the correct shapes. On the third swing, we're gonna to try to swing the handstand and we'll do the downswing together. Okay, go ahead. So hips are open. One, hips are open, good. Two, hips are open. And then same thing, the transition. And then from here, his head goes out and you can do the transition again, perfect. Once you've done a couple of these spotted, now it's time to do multiple swing to handstands in a row with coach assistance. This is to develop the comfort and ability of the gymnast to swing through those positions with strength and power. Okay, let's go ahead. One. Two. And three. Perfect. Once the gymnast has reached the stage of doing multiple sets of swing to handstands with coach assistance, it's down to repetition, repetition, repetition. The gymnast needs to develop the comfort and strength in being able to swing through these positions in order to get comfortable doing it unassisted. The perfect blend of the swing to handstand is doing 50% with the coach and 50% on the end of the bars where they don't need coach's assistance and can feel safe falling either direction. Now it's time to look at some of the common errors we see in cross support swings on parallel bars. One of the most common mistakes we see is swinging through the hips and not the shoulders. Let's take a look at what that looks like. What we can see is the hips and the shoulders are almost in line the whole time and it's only the feet that are swinging back and forth through the hips. This is a false sense of a good swing. We much rather see a gymnast swing 45 degrees with a straight body then horizontal with a pike body. To correct this common error, this is why we have that first drill of support swings with hips open. It allows the gymnast to focus on the good body position and not the height of the swing. It's important to correct this as early as possible. The next common mistake we're gonna look at is arm buckling. Arm buckling happens when the shoulders of the gymnast have gone outside the base of support. When they buckle in the front, it's because our shoulders have actually passed forwards over top of the hands. Let's take a look at what this looks like. We can see that when the shoulders pass the hands, the base of support was no longer above the gymnast's hands, causing the arms to buckle and the body to jump down. 
The last common mistake that we're gonna look at is the bending of the joints. The most common one is bending the arms in the swing to handstand. Oftentimes, gymnasts do this because they wanna feel their butt and heels reach that vertical position faster than they can naturally. So they bend their arms to help transition. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Hope you enjoyed our video and we'll see you next time on Inspire Skills.